All right. Hey, it's Matt Langer's Garage. And today, I hope I'm finally going to get this big block together. It's been a long time coming. Parts and delays and myself and everything else. So, let's see. So, my goal today is to get the heads on, rockers and valve train together, not necessarily finished, and then the cam button and, and timing cover installed. So, shouldn't be that big of a deal. Let's get to it. All right. So, now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I... I'm not going to call it degree in a cam, but I basically check and make sure the timing set zero is zero and basically where everything's supposed to be. So the first thing we're going to do, obviously, is, uh, I need my wrench here, is I'm going to set the cam dot to dot. Straight up and down, dot to dot, simple. I'm going to check it real quick and we'll bring it right back. All right, so now, as you'll see, we have the cam now dot to dot right here. You'll see the dot on the crank gear right there and the dot on the cam gears lined up dang near perfectly. All right, so in this particular cam, we have six degrees of cam advance. So what we're gonna do is take this straight edge right here, lay it up, just try not to be too much in the camera's view here. And you're gonna take a, in this case, 18th off either gauge and it should slide right in and it does. There we go. Got the right angle now. The 18th off feeler gauge. See that? There you go. So we know that the timing set is set dead upright and that we don't have to do anything with the degree with degree in the cam at all. So we know that the intake center line, intake uh, and defined, if your cam doesn't tell you what your cam advance is, you subtract the lobe separation angle from your intake center line and that tells you the degrees of advance or retardation if it's if it's advanced or retarded um in this case this is on a 110 the intake center line is a 104 which is six degrees so uh the rule of thumb is six thousandths per every two degrees so in this case we have an 18 thou feeler gauge it fits perfectly six thousandths every two degrees so there you go so now we'll spin the motor over and we'll check the number six cylinder just to be sure that everything's where it's supposed to be. All right, I'd like to take a quick brief intermission on the current project we're working on just to ask y'all to like, share, subscribe, and leave us a comment on the videos as uh, it helps the channel grow and lets me know what y'all like and don't like about the videos as well as when you leave a comment. I'm guaranteed to reply because I reply to every comment left in the videos. So there you go. Let's uh, now return to our current project. All right, and same for this side. What you'll do, take your straight edge, lay it across, see the gap? Well, that means we've gotta be close, right? So at least we know our cam is halfway ground, right? Now, I'll put you on the tripod real quick. All right, so you'll take your straight edge. Yeah, my straight edge is a little questionable, so just ignore him. Take your feeler gauge, and it should, in all theories, there you go. So that's, once again, an 18th valve feeler gauge. So that does tell you we're installed six degrees advanced, like this cam is supposed to be. There we go. Cam's installed, installed six degrees advanced, like it's supposed to be. And uh, we're gonna lock the timing chain down there and call it a night. Um, tomorrow, I'll come back, we'll do heads and all that. Probably be a different video, because I don't know how long this video is getting, but it's gotta be long enough by now. So we will come back tomorrow, do the cam, do the cam button and cylinder heads. So, hope y'all enjoy it. See y'all later. All right. So what I've done is I put a light, light coat of silicone, laid this gasket up, set him in, and now we're gonna put all the uh, cam bolts in. So now, I don't, use, I don't use Loctite a lot, but when I do, I like to know it's there. So we'll Loctite, I typically Loctite out of all the bolts in the motor, the cam bolts, the torque roller bolts, and the flywheel bolts. That's about all I use Loctite on. Uh, that I can just think of right off the top of my head. I don't just use it on everything. Some people go crazy with it, but not me. So now let's tighten these babies down so that we can uh, be done with this uh, particular area and get this timing cover put on and double check our clearance for our thrust on our camshaft.
tight. We'll flip these little locks back up tight against it. Let me grab a hammer and a screwdriver. All right, so now you just take your little hammer, roll it in, and get right in behind him right there, just like so. And you just start rolling him in. All right, cans locked down. Now we'll retest fit our timing cover and double check our clearance before we bolt it all down. So we'll just put two bolts in the timing cover, probably there and there, right on the outside edge, and we'll double check our clearance. All right, one more quick check on our cam thrust clearance. We'll make sure the cam's all the way to the back. I, pre I apologize ahead of time when my big head's in the way because it's probably going to be. All right, cam's all the way to the back. Let's see, it is sitting on... Is that zero? Holy crap, what happened here? That's not zero, that's past zero for some reason. I must have moved my thing here. Thinking I was done with it. All right, now we're sitting on zero. We'll grab the cam. Walk her forward until she hits the timing cover. And she is now sitting on nine. There you go. Four to ten is what you're looking for. So nine's good enough. All right. So as I said, four to ten is good enough. Four to ten is what you're looking for. It's sitting at nine, which is it's on the higher end of the spec. But I do believe as I tighten up the rest of these bolts, it'll pull this cover up a little tighter and closer to everything. So I think we'll lose a little bit of clearance there, which is not that big of a deal, um, which is good for us. So we're gonna call it good enough and we're gonna pull the cover back off, put a thin bead of silicone on the gasket there or on the cover itself and put it back together. And then we'll bring you back once it's time to put the wool pan or heads on or whatever we do next. All right, and now for pickup tube clearance, we will pull this wool pump all the way down to where it belongs. Probably just use my crescent wrench. It should be laying here around me somewhere. It's right beside you. For the time being, just to pull this pump up. And we will then check the clearance for the pickup tube to the bottom of the pan. And once we're done with this, clearance checking is over. Just kidding. Still got more clearance checking to do once we get the heads on, but that's a whole different game. All right, there you go. All we'll pumps pulled up. Just slide that guy in the back of the motor right there. And we'll pull this guy up right here. Now we got a fresh black oil pan. Now a lot of people are going to tell me that I need the gasket on place. I use the gasket as the clearance. So that is what it is. Here we go. Drop this pan on here. You'll see it's hovering a little bit. Push her down. There's your oil pan clearance for your uh, pickup. I'm, sometimes I'll go in and tweak it just a hair more than that, but that's all you really need because the gasket's enough clearance to... Uh, Confirm. So now we'll pull the pan back off and lay it nice and flush on the motor. And that is where we want our pickup. I think I'm going to take it just a hair down from there. And then I'm going to, like I said before, I'm going to debate. I may put, put a brace on it. Let's see how loose it is. Uh, it's a little loose. So I'm going to see what I can do about putting a brace here. See if I have any scrap steel laying around. All right. Well, I busted out the welder, welded everything up. See it's hanging out over here. Yeah, ignore my ugly welds, but they're going to do their job. So you see, we just spot weld, put a spot weld here, spot weld there, and a spot weld there. And that keeps this guy nice and firm and keeps it from pulling out right here. And then, of course, you bolt it right here, just like that. That door is not going nowhere. It's good and firm and solid. Now, what's left is to put the oil pan on, which I don't think y'all want to watch that. 
but um, when I put the oil pan on, I'll put a big glob of silicone in the corners, all four corners here, and then I'll come to the very front, and it'll go right here across, because it always tends to leak right there, and right here in this corner where the gasket sits. And then the, no the other side of the gasket gets nothing. So I'll get the oil pan installed, and then the bottom end is all tied up and done.